Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fate Grand Order video. What are we going to be talking about today? Something I wasn't expecting to talk about today. <laughs> because they randomly released a Halloween Revival 2024 summoning campaign for the NA exclusive, because this was not on the JP version of the game. So I'm going to be talking about it, because it did show up out of nowhere. <laughs> Feel free to tell me if you decided to pull for Ahsoka Vihime, whether or not you're going to be summoning for it. Uh, for so, so we start as always. Should you summon on this banner? Um, so actually, there is a reason someone would summon for this banner, and I feel like it doesn't have to do with the two five stars. Uh, Soka Behime and Vlad, I'll talk about a little bit later, obviously, because they are both not limited units on the banner. Um, you can get them randomly at any point. And if you were really that desperate to get one of these SSRs, you could always use the SSR ticket later on down the road if you wanted to go that route. But, um, there are limited things on this banner. And mainly, it's the Halloween ca craft essences. So, uh, Osoka Behime, which comes first, has Trick or Treatment, Phantom Knight, and From Wonderland. And just to be double sure about that, I'll look at here where it says, yep, Trick or Treatment, Phantom Knight, and From Wonderland. And Vlad has Halloween Petite Devil, Halloween Arrangement, and Jack-O-Lantern. Um, obviously, the reason that you would want to get... There's two reasons why you would want to get C's in any given time, in, any, any time in the game. It is usually... Well, three times, actually. It's because it helps grind for an event. It's because the effect of it is so insane that you would love to have it. And the third one is because the art is real nice. And... I feel like for all these CEs, the art is real nice for them, so that's always a given for me. I actually have all these, so that's why I'm not tempted to really summon. I have Trick or Treatment. I'm pretty sure, I don't remember if I have one copy, or if, I think I, I forget. No, Trick or Treatment, I was able to get one single combi. It was Dangerous Beast was the one I was able to max limit break, which is not on here. Um, but Trick or Treatment, Phantom uh, Knight, and From Wonderland all have wonderful art, but for the most part, their effects are just kind of okay. Trick or Treatment having NP gain and critical damage w does sound very nice, but because there's no starting NP, it probably means that not a lot of actual units can make use of it. Uh, same thing goes for Buster and MP gain and Quick and Buster. It's all very small. Obviously, three Cs usually don't get to see much use at all, but whatever. So, outside of the art, which again, I don't blame you for wanting the art for Trick or Treatment. That was the whole reason I summoned on Ahsoka Behime's banner back in the day, was to get a copy of Trick or Treatment, and I succeeded in that. Um, but for the most part, with Ahsoka Behime herself, which I'll talk about as soon as I finish talking about these Cs, it's, it's an easy skip. For Vlad, though, he has Halloween Petite Devil, Halloween Arrangement, and Jack-O-Lantern. Jack-O-Lantern isn't anything, like, crazy. It's damage plus 100, other than the very nice art of Liz on a Jack-O-Lantern. It's not much going on here. But Halloween Arrangement and Halloween Petite Devil are both very good Cs. Halloween Arrangement ha is a taunt CE that gives defense plus 60%. On the first turn, it's a single turn taunt. Uh, I underestimated, I remember one time I said like, well, I don't think you'd ever want these CEs at all unless you wanted the art, which the art is really good. And then someone said, actually you should want Halloween Arrangement because Halloween Arrangement is an insanely good CE. And the reason is, is that they actually don't release very many taunt CEs in the game at all. If I remember right, I think there's only like, let me see, there's one, two, three, four. There's four in the entire game. <laughs> With Guda Guda Poster Girl being, I think, one of the better ones because it gives it for three turns. And the other ones give it for one turn and they have other various effects like Grand New Year giving invincibility. In this case, it's a 60% increase in defense or 80% if you have it max limit broken. Um, the reason it's good is that sometimes for a lot of specific units, the one I can, I can come, that comes to mind instantly is Hijikata. There's some units that you really just want to defend for that one turn. So if you give them the Tonsi to a unit that is, can't take the hits, it can be very helpful if you're going for a very specific strategy or in general, if you're in a challenge quest and you need someone else to take the aggro for the first turn to make sure that the unit that you don't want to get hit is able to stay alive just a little bit longer. It is really good. So there's a reason why they don't make, make very many taunt CEs is because they actually don't want taunt to have to be given to very many units because of its ability to diver, diverge people. Like the way I used Halloween arrangement is that I actually put it on, I believe it was Yang and Yang with the Berserkers meant that 
the Berserker. The Berserker just did no damage for her, and I was safe for that single turn. And then I could activate her taunt again, and then I was able to protect the other two party members long enough for the, the, the fight eventually to just get worn out because they could not counter back with it. And that's just one kind of application that you can see with a taunt and Halloween Petite Devil is an increase to MP gain while also starting with 50% um, MP charge, which is really good. I think the, in general, having a unit with an MP gain C is extremely good. What I'll say is that I'm pretty sure at this point it's been power crept, because if I remember correctly, I think the most recent shoot in CE for Halloween actually comes pretty close to being basically this effect, which is a little bit more. Uh, finish up. So this is the increase. When it's fully max element broken, it gives 20% plus MP damage and plus 50%. So obviously, if you get her MP2 with 60%, she hits better. But for the most part, it has been a little bit like power crept. Um, uh, Sapphire is now usually the one I think people go for. Ruby, Sa not Ruby Sapphire. It's called, um, oh, sorry. The reason I couldn't find it was because it's called Azure Magical Girl. But anyway, you can see that this effect, kind of the an increase of a large MP generation rate, is usually the one they go to because it gives a lot of it. And it's really good on units who maybe have the attack, but they just really badly need that MP generation. So all that is a long way of saying that I think Halloween Petite Devil is a very good CE, but obviously you would not summon for it specifically just because we'd literally at this moment have a CE that's free to play that can reach its effect at only one and good luck trying to get six not six five copies of Halloween Petite Devil for it to be max limit broken so you can start with 25% uh, MP gain and 60% starting MP charge really it's Halloween arrangement is the big one for this one for sure but anyway that's the CEs for this um for this banner. I actually went a little bit more into it just because Halloween arrangement was enough for me to be, and Halloween Petite Devil was enough for me, and Trick or Treatment to be honest. Just because the art of Trick or Treatment is so iconic at this point. <laughs> Why didn't they never release a Nightingale with this outfit? Fago and its inability to release any of the Halloween servants, by the way, any of these servants in Halloween costumes as actual just costume dresses or servants, I'm, I'm going to go on a rant. I'm going to stop. So let's talk about the actual units in case you wanted to summon for them. So we're going to start with Ahsoka Behime. Tell me if you were able to get her if you decide to go for her. I assume that she's got a lot of dedicated fans out there, but um, dedicated fans who probably wish... I, my friend of mine was actually, but let me let me see it because it's been a while since I've seen her kid. But I remember her kid being not the greatest part about her. She has, as I said, uh, she's an assassin with four quick uh, quick hits, two arts, um, and one buster. Four hits on the quick, two hits on the arts, three hits on buster, five hits on um, on extra. Her active skills are Four Gods Divination Hakuro, uh, which is after her interlude, um, replaces Shapeshift A+, which is uh, an increase to own defense by 30% for one turn, further increases own defense for three turns, increases own debuff resistance for three turns, increases party's critical damage for three turns, 30% to defense, 40% to debuff resistance, and 50% to crit damage on a cooldown of five. Her second skill is the Shiogami Manipulation EX, which is a charging one ally's MP gauge and then increasing the crit star generation rate for three turns, 20% NP and 50% to star rate. Her third skill is the Castle Ghost A++, which reduces one enemy's defense for a single turn and then removes their buffs, 40% down on defense on a cooldown of five. Passive skills are Territory Creation A+, Presence Concealment Shade B, and then Divinity C. Her third skill is an anti-archer attack damage aptitude, because trust no one, not even yourself. And her noble phantasm, after a strengthening, is the Kuro no Hyaki Hachitendo-sama, Lord Hachitendo of Hakuro's Castle's 100 Demons, which is a quick, ranky X noble phantasm, which increases, which is anti-fortress self, which increases the party's defense by 20% for 3 turns, Increases the party's max HP for three turns. The MP level one, it's 2,000 plus uh, HP bonus, and if you get it all the way to, H to level five, it's 4,000. And then she increases the party's quick performance for three turns, and then also increases their buster performance for three turns. At charge level one, it's 30% for both, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it's 50% for both. And that is Ahsoka Behime. Um, yeah, it's not that she's bad. It's more that she's very niche in what she wants to do. So basically, you want to be on a team, which funny enough, thanks to the new Scotty, you actually do want... She could... I could see her seeing use in a team that has a specific quick 
um, DPS unit that had two quick cards and two buster cards uh, to be used alongside them. Um, but this is also something that really only is ever used in long, longer forms of fights, such as Challenge Quest, where obviously she her quit her kit looks a lot better because she has a way of um, having just a little bit more defense against them. She has the ability to give the entire party just 50% crit damage off the top, and then she also has the ability to get a bunch of crit stars as well. And her third skill, while it seems a little bit not much, the ability to just move, remove debuffs on a cooldown of 5 skill is actually pretty good. Even though I wish at this point, it, if it ever did get a buff, it would pr probably go to 50%. So what ends up happening is that you have a unit that is actually probably very good in very specific challenge quests that would be able to fit her playstyle and make her use of everything that she does which is the ability to increase your HP, increase your defense, increase her defense while also increasing the party's quick and buster performance and giving them the ability to crit just a little bit more. As long as you're in a that kind of specific fight, then you will be able to use Akasuka Behime, but for the most part, for a lot of people, there's not really a reason for it, for using her all that much. If they ever give her the ability to give herself a 100% charge or something, or maybe even closer to 50%, She'd probably be insanely sick. This, this Noble Phantasm is very close to actually being extremely good. I just feel like because she has nothing to give herself. Like, if she was Arts, it'd be a little bit easier just because Castoria gives 60% to both. But because Summer Scotty and regular Scotty are so stingy and they only give the 50% total to a single unit, it makes it a little bit tougher for her to be, like, building up those specific things. Um, so you have to have someone, even though you want to take max advantage of what she gives, which is having the other units have two quick cards and two busters, it also means that you would very rarely actually ever get to use her Noble Phantasm. <coughs> Unless you were in a situation where you were able to use all three of her arts cards and actually power up that way, but either way, that's Okusoka Behime. I do think she's a pretty cool character. She's cool. I remember not liking her when she actually first debuted, but over time, I've gone a little bit softer on her. Similar to Blackbeard, I felt a little bit... I've gotten a little bit aggro at them. But anyway, that's a Sokka Behime. Next is Vlad. Vlad, or Dracula, uh, is a Berserker. He has one quick, he has two bu oh, he has two arts and two busters. With two hits on the quick, two hits on the arts, one hit on the buster, and three hits on extra. His first skill is Bloodsucker A, which is a chance to reduce one enemy's MP gauge by one and then charges out MP gauge. 100% drain chance and MP up in by 30% when it's at level 10 and cooldown is 6. His second skill, which it places after the interlude, it after his interlude goes in from Shapeshift C to Legend of Dracula A+. Um which full name is apparently Legend of Dracula, the Secession of Blood A+. It increases his attack and defense for three turns, both of them being 30% on the cooldown of five. And his third skill is the Fearsome Immortal A+, which grants himself uh, gut status for one time, one turn, stackable with other guts, then further grants himself the, but the gut status for one time, five turns, and then increases his own MP generation rate for three turns. He revives with uh, uh, 2,500 HP, and then the second revive is the same amount, and then his MP rate is increased by 30%, and the cooldown is 7, and this obviously comes in after his strengthening, and it replaces battle continuation. His only passive skill is Madness Enhancement EX. His third skill is an anti-lancer critical attack chance resistance, because again, trust no one, not even yourself. And his Noble Phantasm, which upgrades after a strengthening, which originally upgraded after an interlude, is the Kaz... Kazakli Bay, the Bloodstained, uh, the Bloodstained King Demon, rank B plus anti unit hits ten times its arts. It deals damage to a single enemy and then reduces their arts resistance by twenty percent for three turns. And then uh, the damage is one thousand two hundred and MP level one. If you get him to MP level five, it's one thousand eight hundred. And then if you gain crit, and then his overcharge effect is the ability to gain crit stars, which is twenty at charge level one. And if you get him all the way to the final charge level, it's forty. Uh, and that is Vlad. Vlad is an excellent berserker single target who has the unfortunateness of eventually he has to compete with Summer Castoria. So if you're some, even though I think he is a really good single target arts berserker probably the best in na at the moment um the problem is is that when you're looking at the future and you're looking at future proofing he eventually has to contend with a very 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 good single target berserker if you did not know 
If you thought Castoria was good as just a regular unit um, as a support, she eventually gets to be her own uh, single target attacking. One that deals 150% extra against threats to humanity, reduces their critical attack, and yes, you can see all here, she gets a little bit more in terms of um, all the bonus stuff that she gets. She's extremely good. The only reason I bring this up is because I know a lot of people are saving for Lost Belt 6 Summer. So if you're one of those people, it's a very easy thing here. If you're summoning for Lost Belt 6 Summer and you already plan to get Artoria Caster, the Summer version, you would literally just be wasting St. Quartz going for Vlad. Uh, the only people who should be going for Vlad are people who, one, don't care about Summer Castoria, and two, absolutely love Vlad. Um, to the point that they would love to have more copies of him now, and get his MP increased, and get more medals with him. Those are the only people, basically. Um, and if they do have him, again, he's a fantastic unit. I really like this third skill being, being able to be used in multiple ways. One, obviously, as a quick protection, because Berserkers die very quickly in very hard content. So this will make it so if he dies the first time after he uses it, um... He'll automatically be revived, and then if you get it again, the second revive will then also still be there, which will trigger after five turns, which is very long time for Guts to stick around. And then it increases his MP generation rate, which can be very useful because his Noble Phantasm hits ten times, and then also reduces their Arch Resistance by 20% for three turns. He's going to be able to do a lot of damage. Um, he has some longevity thanks to his uh, ability to use the um, to have two guts, one that stacks with his guts and one that will last a pretty decent amount of time. And yeah, I from all the years that I've used Vlad, I've always been very happy with my Vlad. Um, this is a unit that I got pretty close to maybe the first year of the game, either before the first year anniversary or just after the first year. I don't remember. Uh, and over the years, he's been very useful to me as to as a uh, single target berserker um, for arts. Especially after Castoria released, I was able to be like, oh yeah, this guy goes really crazy. <laughs> really nice. It feels really nice using him. Again, the only bummer here, it's nothing to do with him. It's the fact that there's just something else coming along the way. But if you don't care about any of that stuff, I still think he's pretty good. Though, is he worth summoning on now? Probably not, because there's Castoria coming up, there's Koyanskaya coming up, there's Melusain coming up, there's so many good units coming up that um, it's very hard to justify it. But if you love Vlad and you specifically really, really want a copy of this specific CE, it's probably worth it to just go throw a single multi and say like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try for something here. Um, though for the most part, it's one of those, like, I have so much, and I've been saving so much, and you know what? I'm gonna give myself a little treat. I can summon on Vlad one time. Otherwise, you shouldn't. You really shouldn't. <laughs> As I mentioned more and more over the next coming, like, months, there's just so many big units with, especially Castoria, hanging around, like, Damocles' sword. It's very hard to like justify summoning on a lot of these banners unless you are just like you know what i can spare a single multi or i can spare 10 tickets otherwise you really shouldn't be doing it at all i cannot say that enough to drive it home quite enough but anyway that's the video everyone i hope you liked it this is a very weird video i realized because i think a vast majority of it is the seas at the beginning a very small bit on osoka behime and a lot more on vlad but it's fine um I'm still myself getting ready for the stuff to come. Also, just finding time to actually relax. I think I spent most of Monday just actually relaxing and not thinking about what needs to be done before I leave on Thursday, I believe. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Feel free to tell me how you do if you're planning to summon on Vlad yourself, or if you have anything else to mention about some of the stuff I mentioned here. Uh, whether or not you actually have maybe you're someone who's like actually there's more to trick or treatment than just the very 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 good art on it let me tell you about it feel free to tell me about it until next time everyone i wish you all the best of luck until next time peace out